This week there is actually isn't a trailer. No, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Yeah, that uh, that campaign is closed. Uh, yeah, they had many, many chances and reminders. Yeah, indeed, yes. Uh, but uh, but anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of Critique Corner with me, Daniel Parker, and me, DB Fastbinder. And, and you know, usually we do our. Uh, I should say, up until recently, we've been doing our sort of uh, diet midnight's edge thing, uh, which is with whatever we had opinions about. And we've recently changed over because we realized that our opinions were starting to become largely, we don't care. They already ruined that. Why do we care that they ruined it again? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just weren't feeling it. So uh, we're trying some things we do feel. And uh, among those is a mix of new and classic movie and TV reviews. Yes, and uh, we've got uh, a couple of pretty uh, interesting uh, choices uh, for this week. Um, Definitely disparate choices. Uh, indeed, yeah. <laughs> uh, but before we get started, uh, I'd like to do a little shilling of my own, if that's all right. Sure, no problem. So... Uh, as of Sunday, I have released another book in the uh, Confessions of the Magpie Wizard series, and uh, let me let me give you a little bit of inducement here because we're up to uh, six books now. Yes, uh, counting the Rose Cooper spinoff. Uh, so, book five is now out, which is basically is the aftermath of the major attack in book four. Uh, just how everyone deals with that. But if you're saying, well, I haven't been reading the series up to now, I don't know. Well, this week, book one is on sale for 99 cents on Kindle. So, if you want to give it a go, Confess the Magpie Wizard, book one, Infiltration on Amazon, and you have until Saturday to make that choice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I... I... I highly recommend it. By the way, they're they're. Uh, I've read I've read every book so far. Up a, well, well, I, I haven't gotten to book five yet, but um, I mean, you've but, been busy uh, fulfilling your own stuff. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I I can attest to uh, I can attest to the story. The story of these books are are really amazing. Uh, great characters. <laughs> <laughs> I do like these books a lot. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pick a pick up a copy of this, and uh, uh, links are in the description uh, on the stream. By the way. So yep. now I got that out of the way. I mean, so right now I'm trying to experiment with doing the screen sharing in the same browser that we're doing this in. So okay, bear with me a moment. Yes, uh, uh, DB is uh, uh, house sitting. Right, so I also don't have access to my usual dual screen. So yeah. if I have the thing in front of me, I can't look at Daniel. At the, actually, no, this, that's right. This is a way for me to look at Daniel at the same time. So okay. without us going into screen and screen and screen and screen and screen mode. Yes, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and share this tab. All right, so right now you should be seeing our newer review of the week, uh, which is Elemental, which... I think is officially our first uh, no hype review in a long time. Yes. Um, yeah, I can't remember the last one we did. It might have been. Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, no. uh, it'll, 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 it'll be Doctor coming. Strange. It, I mean, it would have been something that we had a passing interest in because of the of the series is attached to. Yeah. Um, but not uh, anything. Uh, it might have been Doctor uh, Strange. Uh, oh. Mario. Oh, right, Mario. Okay, so yeah. So we, we had decent luck with the last one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so, uh, but yeah, we, uh, yeah, we decided to watch this movie, uh, which is now on Disney Plus. And it's, uh, we, we've been talking about this movie for a few, you know, since it came out, uh, at least with its box office, because uh, it did, even though it still lost money, it did leg out and it didn't do as badly as. Uh, we were expecting it to. Yeah, it seems to have caught everybody by surprise. Because, uh, yeah. let me see here. Well, its opening weekend was just absolutely astounding in terms of, like, man, how do you crater worse than Lightyear? Yeah. 
<laughs> and and if memory serves, worse than Strange World. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those. Yes. Those were both uh, total disasters for Disney. Uh, but this. Um, but as we okay. said, this movie tend, ended up lagging out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So come on. Move a little faster, computer. There we go. Uh, on on somebody else's Wi-Fi at the moment, so I can't vouch for it. Uh, okay. But. Uh, yeah, so if we go versus light year here on the numbers, which you can't see, but that's a okay, because I'm going to tell you the numbers for those just listening at home. Yes. As the numbers moves like molasses. So okay, I, I got it here for you. Okay. Uh, so it it ended up doing um, 470. Uh, yeah, 476 million total. Um. And then Lightyear, it didn't even get to like 250, right? No, no, it didn't. So yeah, Lightyear was like two. Let's say like 220. That that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, that, 218. Yeah. Yeah, it was closer domestically, like 154 versus 118. Yeah. But so internationally, it just got smoked. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is interesting because you know toy, the last Toy Story movie had made like a billion worldwide. Yeah, it did. Um, and but uh, of course that was pre, you know, virus of unknown origin. <laughs> pre virus of unknown origin, and uh, honestly, pre everybody getting sick of Disney's nonsense. Right. Yeah. Um, when was that Toy Story four? Was that twenty nine? Was that a twenty nineteen movie? Yes. 2019, yeah, was, yeah. That was like Disney's golden age, where they had so many movies that made a billion dollars. <clears throat> yeah, and then, and then it just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man! For those of you listening to the uh, trans, the audiobook version, we both just made a simultaneous, uncoordinated diving motion with our hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By coincidence, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, this thing comes out, its opening weekend was uh, 29 million. So it's like, okay, wow, this is like a hyper bomb. Then it legged out. And that's just, uh, that's interesting because movies with nothing to them don't usually leg out. Yeah. And, and this movie, there really isn't much to it, at least, at least plot wise. There isn't. Yeah. You know, I, I should say, yeah. movies without some sort of charm or appeal don't leg out. Right, yeah. So the fact that it did manage to, you know, make the best of a bad situation launch-wise uh, was always intriguing to us. Yeah. Yeah, and then, um, and so, uh, so yeah, so I, I guess we should probably get into get into the movie you know? right uh, the, right this is our backstory of why we chose this movie and what was intriguing us about it right yeah and yeah it was and, and of course we'd heard a lot of the other stuff that you know the usual commentary that we we've heard about it with regards to disney and everything so, yeah. yeah although people largely didn't care about this movie enough to rip it a new one there is no like there were like some headlines like woke elemental fails yeah and then everybody forgot it existed and then everybody looked up and was like wait how did this thing almost break a half billion <laughs> yeah <laughs> i thought we buried that back in june yeah <laughs> but uh yeah so uh so the movie is um uh basically a romantic comedy um between two people uh it, it's it, it's it's an old Kind of trope you, you see with with romance movies of you know two people from two different backgrounds you know yep. finding finding love you know falling in love with each other and um and in this case it's a guy who's made out of water and a girl who's made out of fire yep to, to quote an old whole life mean water in the fire why <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> water in the fire why I know, understand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, love Doggo Chan. Yeah. Uh, so, I have. Okay, I remember Wade's name. What was her name again? Uh, Ember. Ember, that's right. So, in a world where there are elementals? Question mark. 
Um, so I, I think everybody took one look at this premise and said, hey, wait, this is basically Zootopia if the fox and the bunny were in love. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and there's that was my thought when I was watching it. I mean, there's even a scene where the two of them are in a hot air balloon together, just like in Zootopia. Like, come on. I, I imagined this scenario where the person pitching this movie from Pixar was in the office with the person pitching Zootopia. Like, you know, we'll just we'll just pretend that you know there was some sort of development hell in this one, which. Uh, it could have been. Like could they're both been. in there at the same time, and the person from Disney Animation goes in, or you know, actually no, the person from the Disney Animation is the first one to go in. But uh, yeah, they go and they say, "Oh, I have, a, I have this premise. It's a city full of animals, and every part of the city is built around the different sizes of animal and the different needs of the different species. And there's like a bunch of different climate zones. Yeah. And then the next person comes in." Uh, and they happen to catch the tail end of that descript of that uh, pitch. They go, "Oh crap!" And they quickly <laughs> start erasing things from their, like erasing words from their uh, written proposal. They, it's a world where there are a bunch of different elementals, and there are different zones designed for each elemental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, like, oh, phew, okay. <laughs> They, they still think that Pixar is magic, so they they, they, went, they went with it. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah. So um, the the movie starts off where we meet uh, Ember's parents, uh, Bernie and Cinder. Of course, those aren't their real names. Yeah, they did something kind of clever there, where uh, it's like, so what are your names? It's Sounds of Fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you spell that? Then he proceeds to mouth it out slowly with more fire automatopias yeah. how about bernie and cinder it's like a very ellis island type of situation yeah yeah um and uh of course they they encounter various you know uh, uh uh when they yes. get there because they're fire and you know nobody likes nobody likes fire though fire elementals because of they're the fourth wave of immigrants right and uh and they <clears throat> You know, they, they, they cause the earth people to burn up and they cause the water people to evaporate. And, you know. Yeah. Um, so. So just to give a quick summary, because there isn't a whole lot of plot to get bogged down in. Right. So, yeah. so old man Bernie, he runs a fire shop. Like it seems like they're the first fire people to show up. So they're like the, you know, the ones making the bedrock of fire town. Yeah, they. Um, it, it, I will say the kind, kind of uh, criticism I do. One criticism I do have is they really don't show the fact that they're they're like the pillar of the community, you know, because it, it it obviously they are, but you know they really don't. They didn't get into that too much, but uh, yeah, it does seem like the place is like a hub for the, the fire people in the area. Yeah, but it's. Um... It feel, if, yeah, it does kind of feel like they should be a, pre presented as a bigger deal because again, like they got they showed up in town, they didn't have a fire town to go to. When I say I don't think they actually called it fire town in the movie, they might have, but it's been since Sunday since I saw it. Yeah, yeah, they called it yeah they called it fire town, but yeah, like the the part of town, they, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, then they they uh, they have a daughter Ember, and the whole thing is. Uh, the dad is is you know basically training her to to take over the store for when he retires, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it doesn't go well for her because uh, she has a, a you know a, a pardon pardon the pun but a fiery temper. Boy, stereotypes much? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And so uh, you know she she loses her temper and then she turns purple and blows up. Yeah, uh, she goes, going purple is when you get so angry that you just like go a different color. Yeah, um, and and of course, uh, one of the characters, and if you're looking at the poster, uh, he's down in the lower left corner. the The little Earth Elemental kid has a has a crush on Ember, and he's always trying to ask her out. And of course, he, he's he's like, oh, I you know, he's got flowers coming out of his armpits. I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm going through puberty. I, let me get you, let me let me show you. I got I got flowers where I didn't have flowers before. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> something something only older people would understand. Older viewers would understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he's he, you know, for as prominent as he is on the cover, he's really not in the movie. No, he's maybe maybe two two or three minutes of screen time. That, that, that might be that might be generous. I, I wonder if it's because he is, and also like the weird puberty fixation they have with him there, like where they even have the flower in his own armpit yeah it's very odd uh yeah there's there's quite a bit of adult humor in this movie that um you know yeah like, yeah it's kind of like i know one youtuber i follow who has he, this this guy has like a very large family of foster kids and his own kids yeah so uh he has the unfair advantage if he has kids ranging a wide variety of ages that he can take to a movie and report the kid reactions to it yeah, and he said that for his kids, they actually kind of liked this movie better than Into the Spider Verse. Hmm. So, that, I think that kind of allays the question of, you know, would kids find this entertaining or not? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they they probably would, and that might be why it it, it ended up lagging out because parents were just dump their kids off at the theater. All right, go see this movie, and you know. Yeah, because what else was there for them this summer, really? Yeah, I mean, the, this and Spider-Verse. And, and that was yeah. started to quiet down when this thing started to leg out. And, right. And yeah. the kids only want to see Oppenheimer so many times. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. anyhow, uh, so Ember has one of her flare-ups uh, after dealing with a particularly difficult fire Karen. The worst yeah. kind of Karen. Yeah, yes. <laughs> And she and uh, she has a blow up downstairs, which damages the pipes, which floods the basement. And there's like the fair question: Wait, I thought we shut off the water ages ago. This is basically toxic to us fire people. Yeah, yeah, that that that, may, yeah, that's a that's a huge plot hole right there. That I'm just like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. You know, why 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 are these pipes even in there in the first place? You know, I think I I think I can explain it in the on the movie's terms. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of those it's one of those things that's prima facie extremely weird yeah. uh, and I might be and I might be giving the movie too much credit here but uh, okay. so anyways out of the water emerges Wade a city worker who is trying to investigate a mysterious leak that was happening yes and he yeah he gets sucked into the into the pipes under the shop and then he of course he's he's crying the entire time because you know he heard embers you know whatever meltdown he's like oh he, yeah i'm so he, sorry yeah. <laughs> and then of course he's looking around and he sees he's seeing all these code violations and he, he's like oh i'm so sorry i gotta write you, you write you oh wait, wait you mean you're telling me that your dad built this whole place himself did he get zoning permits because <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have to add that yeah <laughs> Yeah, and and, uh, and so she uh, and so he he leaves and she's she tries to chase him down to stop him from doing it and then uh, uh, unsuccessfully and then he sends it off but then she just kind of gives this whole oh you know this is all my family has and this is my dad's dream and da 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 and what do you know and, uh, we were, I was asking during while we were watching it. Uh, is there something lower than a beta male? So our, our Zeta male here, of course, gives him the sob story and decides to devote himself to helping her out. Right. Yeah. And um, and uh, so then he uh, they may basically make a deal with uh, with his boss that uh, if they if they find out where the leak is, then uh, then the shop won't be shut down. Right. Because they're trying to figure out, you know, like water had been shut off to the shop ages ago what's going on yeah uh and they long story short they end up finding it it's uh the one of the canals near the near the near fire town has a has a has some holes in it so they do everything they try multiple times to to seal this lake using different uh various methods uh of success and uh, and not so successful yeah, what they eventually settle on is uh, Ember makes a plug out of tempered glass. Yes, because uh, uh, 
one one of the things we find out is that she has a talent for melting sand into glass and then turning it into like and and reshaping glass and yeah. You know. So, um, yeah, so it's like, like Daniel said, it's a love story. So, yeah, it's these two people who are kind of opposites, uh, just um, realizing that they love each other. And, oh, but, you know, I'm fire and you're water. Can we be together? Mm -hmm. It's like that, that's kind of the non-spoiler, um, uh, you know, like what the story is about. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and. And like we said, like uh, Wade is just uh, a he's a blubbering mess a lot of the time. He's yes, just, he's, he's he's he comes from a family of blubbering of water elementals too. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Um, so one of the things that I think got this movie tagged with the woke labels that the actor for Wade is non-binary. Mm. Um, I heard, and I heard most people claim that Wade in the movie is non-binary, but I'm pretty sure people called him a him a lot. They did, yeah. So either people were conflating the actor with the character, because I'm guessing a lot of reviewers who went out to say, oh, woke Disney trips again, didn't actually see the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I conflated the actor with the character. Right, yeah. Um, and... Uh... And then of course they we see the the family differences. Of course, um, with with Ember's family, especially her father, uh, you know he he doesn't like water people. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, they didn't like him either. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so there's you know she so she has to like keep their relationship a secret. And of course he's. He shows up in the shop like like oh I'm a, I'm an inspector and like no I, I you know I'm a, I'm a food inspector and then he starts giving them the the basically spicy fire food which is like burning hot briquettes yeah <laughs> and they just well <laughs> I think well they're not bad if you water them down water them down water them down you want to water us down get out of yeah. my shop yeah yeah <laughs> you're you're panned. Uh, band, band, right, right. <laughs> Which, um, okay, so that's that's kind of the broad strokes of the movie. Um, mm -hmm. We have, we have, I have praise and issues with the ending, but we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, so character-wise, I would actually, no, first off, target audience-wise, uh, we've talked before about how it seems like a lot of cartoons that come out of people with a Cal Arts art style are people who really, really wish that it was acceptable for American audiences to watch animations. They have to kind of turn kids' movies into things for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that this is an example of that, but not in an egregious way. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, good to see you, Ninja. Hey, Ninja. Um, yeah, and, uh, and, and you know, they're definitely like some like I was saying, there's some adult stuff in there. Um, yeah, there's a there is a part in there where Ember says something about kissing my ash or kissing their ash. Yeah. Um, well, and you know when uh, Wade first emerges from the water, he looks like he's an Adonis, and, and like he's like doing some beefcake poses before the water <laughs> flows out of him, turning him back to his normal noodle armed self. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah. Um, so, and I think it, I think it more or less works. I, I think that the kids can come along for the ride. Mm -hmm. It is kind of a, it is kind of a slower paced movie, which I appreciate that you know, they didn't feel the need to constantly throw things at the camera. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, um, and it's, which is easy to do, especially with a kid's movie, because, you know, I mean, kids, you got to keep them interested all the time. You know, it's always yeah. got to be something going on, you know? And they do a little bit of that with the uh, background elements of the water city, which, um, okay, so I, I'll, I'll stick with the characters for a minute here. Yeah. I will say that as much as we were making fun of Wade earlier, he does show some admirable traits. Basically, he and Ember are opposites, not just in terms of physical composition, but in terms of personality, too. So it's yes. like, if she's mellowing out, he's mellowing up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting his man card a bit. I don't know. How to, how yeah. You wanna... Yeah. Yeah. He, he does, uh, you know, uh, like you say, he he does act like a beta male sometimes, but uh, but there are there are parts in there where it's like, oh, you know, he 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 is there when it counts, you know. And, yeah, yeah. I, he is a solid person. I would not mind being friends with the Wade, even if I'd have to occasionally, you know, show up at one o'clock in the morning to a sobbing, you know, my, I haven't seen Mister Sniffles for three hours. I put him out at ten, and he he he's, he knows he's supposed to be back by t- by by midnight. Yeah. Okay. Give me a flashlight. We'll go find your cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he he'd be that fr- he'd be that high maintenance friend who would come through in the clutch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say that the mom and dad or Bernie and Cinder are believable characters. Like they they come across as authentic. And you were talking a bit about this before the show that that's the director's experience coming in. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, uh, Peter Schoen was the director, um, and he's uh, kind of like the mascot of Pixar. Um, he's been he's been with the company for decades, and uh, if you if you've seen Up, he uh, the kid from Up is based on him. Uh, and he uh, when he was a kid, his parent he and his parent or I don't know if he came with them, but I mean his parents came immigrated from Korea, and uh, they. Uh, started a shop in the, in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so he was definitely drawing on uh, his life experiences. And I, I would, yeah, I would imagine Bernie and Cinder were, were based on his mom and dad. Yeah. Uh, Wade's family, they are definitely w- wealthy wasps. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's interesting. Um, if you want to like read a racial thing into it, the actor is black. He sounds black, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I really hope he is because I remember seeing a picture of him or he, he, them, yeah. them yeah. when they first came out. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but he, you know, he mentioned that uh, you know he and his dad got along like water or like, uh, oil and glue or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, you almost wonder like, is he mixed race as far as water people go? Do they have? Are there sub races of the different races? Like, Probably. Did, yeah. did, 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 did he have a stereotypical you know, African American dad who wanted his kid to be more manly, but his wife wife wouldn't have it? Probably, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Like, is that is that the subtext here? Am I reading too much into it? It's possible. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But, but it's the but it's the it's a question that popped into my head. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same with me. Yeah, I, I was kind of doing that the whole time when I was watching the movie. I'm like, okay, well, who's who are they? Who are they? Who are they uh, emulating here? What what uh, what ethnicity are they are, are are they supposed to be here? Yeah, yeah. And I'd say that um, so those those characters are good. The what is the dirt kid here? We could have done without. Actually, no. He he does. He is in the story to establish early on. Oh, you know, mixed race marriages or mixed elemental marriages aren't a thing, or mixed elemental relationships aren't a thing. Right. Yeah. And it's in a way that because he's a little kid, her brushing him off is easy for her to do, and it's not like you know anybody would expect her not to. Like even if he was a little fire boy, he would say no. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would say that the other, I would say though that the elements outside of the water and fire are extremely underdeveloped. Yeah, yeah. There, there's one air ele- air character. Uh, like I said, it was Wade's boss, and she's in it for you know a, a very brief period of time. Uh, yeah. We, we, we all, all we get from her is that she's a big sports fan. Yep. Yeah, and um, yeah, but um, and, but yeah, I mean, I would say yeah, the the characters are pretty, you know, yeah, I, I they're they're not offensive, I would say. <laughs> yeah, not offensive covers a lot of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I will take issue with is the world building. Mm. So you kind of have okay, so like to bring up the Zootopia example, everybody understands animal people. Yeah. Even if you're not a furry, you know, like a kid doesn't have to be explained 
why you know Bugs Bunny can walk around and be and act like a human being. Right. Yeah. Everybody just kind of intuitively understands, uh, you know, oh, that's just an animal with human traits or a human with animal traits or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, real quick, ninjas. Uh, so it's better than TMT. Yeah, I would say it's better than TMT. Yeah, I'd say much better. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. Um, I was like, what's an elemental? Are these are these spirits? Are they, is this a world where the elements are given life? Yeah. It, yeah, they yeah they don't really explain that too well. Yeah. The other thing is that, all right. So the the clear metaphor here, I think that the we, we were talked about it before the show. It's like the fire people are vaguely Middle Eastern, Indian, Southeast Asian, somewhere. Like I, I kept getting the Middle Eastern vibe from the dad. I, I that's interesting. I, I was getting a, a China, Chinese from the dad. I suppose the way to resolve this would be to look up the ethnicity of the voice actor and see if he was. Uh, I also wonder if he was the same voice actor as the creepy anglerfish uncle from Luca. Because now I think about it, they kind of sounded kind of similar. Probably. Okay, come on, IMDb. Uh, well, you pull that up. Um, yeah. So, anyway, so, you know, they were clearly a metaphor for immigrants. Now, you know, on the question of is this movie woke? Well, they were legal immigrants, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I'm looking at him. Um, I would say he's. God, he actually looks um, okay. So his, his name is Ronnie Del Carmen. Oh, okay. So, so, wait, what do you mean? Some of the fire people are. Or Latinx? Oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh he's the uh, uh, he's Filipino. Oh, okay. He's, he's from the Philippines. Okay, so yeah. okay, so so only in a sort of uh, in the sense that they were a Spanish colony and picked up some of the culture, but okay, right? Yeah, and and the uh, yeah, and the, the 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 actress, the voice actress for the mom for Cinder, uh, she's Persian. So okay, I I can I can see that. Yeah, okay. so they are just uh, anyway. So. Unless you are the most ardent racist who hates all immigration, regardless of legality and uh, the people being brought in, you can't look at me and uh, straight in the eye and tell me that it is literally dangerous to be around somebody from another country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in fact, the the movie poster here, uh, where uh, Ember here is burning through the park bench that they're sitting on. Yeah, <laughs> kind of points to like the fundamental world building problem. Yeah, um, you know, everywhere the yeah the fire fire elementals have to be careful about what where they go and who they're who they're around. Like, so like the scene uh, when Ember is on the on the train trying to catch Wade, she she'll she runs into like a earth elemental and like is a big blush like a blush looking tree thing and then. Oof, you know, he's just, Make all his it. leaves and everything in bark are gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's like, I guess it's kind of a metaphor for them disrupting the local order, but I don't know, like that that, that feels like, um, it almost it almost comes across as something that would come about more from, like a very, like a, somebody being very negative about immigration when that is not the case with this movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, there's a lot of things that look kind of cool, but don't actually make any coherent sense. Mm -hmm. Like um, they have these uh, the trains that everyone gets around on, clearly built by the water people, and for whatever reason, th these are trains that are suspended I on on water yeah. instead of having a track. So it's almost yeah. it's like having um, a big. Um, a big water slide, right. which yeah. outside of the engineering questions of how the hell that would possibly work, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's also like they're just constantly sloshing water all over the place, which is actually the basis for the plot where the the canal is broken and there's water flooding and flooding all over the place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because the 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 ships from this. Uh, wherever the the yeah the canal or thing area it was 
knock on the water into the spillway. Yeah. Which this would be a bit like if every time a delivery truck went through Chinatown, it accidentally released a puff of sarin gas that they had to be careful of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, I, I I was saying that when we were watching this. I'm like like it's you know having that that train with the water spilling out in the fire down is like it's like a big f u to the fire people. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. when it's right next to Fire Town too. Yeah, <laughs> and, and there's actually a scene that I, I one reviewer I saw did point this out. They're like there's they're trying to break into this place where they have this flower, this rare flower that can grow in any environment. That is a clear metaphor for unity or whatever. Right. Get to the problem with that in a second. But the two of them, uh, Wade and Ember, just walk through a chain link fence <laughs> like it isn't there. And they ask, why do these even exist? That is a bad question from a world building perspective. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it... It, it might be a funny little little scene, but uh, it, uh, obviously it was written in there to be a funny little scene. But yeah, it just doesn't work. It, it, it undermines the coherency of your fantasy universe. Yeah, yeah, um, and yeah, and the and the reason Wade one uh, takes Ember to see the flower is because uh, Ember and and Bernie, her father, went tried to go see it, but they wouldn't let him in because they were fire. Right, you you'll burn the plant. Right, yeah, and it's a you know, and they were thinking they were saying like, a, oh, this is a plant that can grow anywhere, including water and even fireland. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's that's clearly the metaphor for togetherness, which is convenient because the the uh, flower garden had been flooded, but they were able to put her in a bubble and have this nice under water adventure that was like probably one of the visual show pieces for the or set pieces for the movie that was the most impressive. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I asked the question, wait, if this is a plant that can grow in literally any environment, why is this thing rare? Shouldn't by, by now, if it can grow, if it can propagate and grow through the water, shouldn't it be casting seeds everywhere? Shouldn't this thing be a menace to the city as it's taking over the local <laughs> ecosystem? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it would be a, just a, a, a horrible weed that you're, they're, they're having to try to kill and they just can't, can't kill it. If yeah. it can grow on anything, it should be like growing from the sides of buildings, drilling through the concrete. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you might say, DB, you and Daniel are overthinking this dumb kids movie. Just turn off your brain and have fun. Well, to, br to bring up the Zootopia example again, Zootopia was very well thought through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I, I feel like this, I feel like the setting was designed for the visuals and then any sort of uh any sort of logic was if it ever came up at all was like after the after the fact right yeah yeah like, there it, it definitely felt like a making up as as they went along kind of thing yeah yeah and uh that, that also brings itself into the end into the ending which you know spoiler alert if you've managed to watch this rant about this movie for 30 minutes at this point yeah, <laughs> not not counting our introduction. Uh, uh, so Ember's fix is temporary. Her tempered glass breaks, and there's a huge flood that threatens to wipe out Firetown. And she yeah. and Wade get trapped, and Wade sacrifices himself heroically because, you know, oh, oh you know, she has to. They're, they're stuck in this place together, and he'll evaporate. He's like, hey, I'm. Well, as long as you're okay and but he just turns it to steam so everything's okay and they get and they get together yes and and um and of course uh ember decides that she doesn't want to run the store um and uh you know so and then they uh they sell it to uh Ber it sounds like bernie uh sells it to like these this this couple that were always in the shop all the time yeah they Right, they were running the shop now, and which is yeah. interesting because if they were just hanging out in the shop all the time, where did they get the money to buy the shop? Yeah, yeah. What kind of what kind of sweetheart deal did he cut them? The the you don't have an heir deal. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, this, this, um, so I would say this is a movie that is meant to be felt and not thought about because every time I thought about it. It did not do the movie any favors. Yeah, yeah, um, and it's it, it it's one of those uh, 
one of those rare Disney movies where there's no antagonist. Oh, all too common these days. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Like the, the only villain in this movie was poor city planning, and you know. Yeah, maybe like, the, the closer you could get would be somebody siphoning off repair funds for the canal f- for you know to buy themselves a yacht or something yeah yeah they got some like slush fund going or something yeah but uh it, well that that probably would have been too complicated for a kid's movie <laughs> yeah though i mean they that's kind of what they did in zootopia maybe that's why they changed it maybe they, <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> But, I mean, like they they brought up a lot of things, like you know, building violations and things like that, that a kid wouldn't necessarily have a concept of. That's true. Yeah. So, um, and I, so I'll say, like, I I liked the characters well enough. Um, like early on, neither character made a very good first impression, but that was that was by design. They grew over time and evened each other out, and you kind of did see what they saw in each other. Yeah. It's like on a romance level, serviceable enough. On a world building level, not quite a miserable failure because it at least has a cool visual idea of what it wants to be. Yeah. And then the animation itself, um, I never got used to how the fire people looked. Never. Yeah, it 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 was um, hard to focus on them. Yeah, because like well. It, now I, I did say I did read somewhere that uh, when they were conce- conceptualizing this movie, they uh, they greenlit it with no idea how they were going to pull off some of the effects, specifically the water people effects. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I will I will compliment the ambition. Oh, okay. And that, yeah, so this is something that, that came up while I was looking for an image for today. And um, I'm thinking that this is like that definitely kind of looks like a vaguely Tumblr-y style. And I, I've seen a few CGI movies now that have tried to do that. And this definitely looks better than um, what do you call it? Uh, the what was that one with the with the animal gangsters from last year? The oh, um, the heist movie. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember what. I watched half an hour of that and couldn't stand the character designs anymore. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. I know the movie you're talking. There were there were wolves, weren't they? Yeah, like there, like yeah. there was a wolf and a spider and a snake and. Yeah, yeah. The uh, bad uh, yeah. guys. I think it was the bad guys. That sounds right. The bad guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah anyway, yeah, yeah. so I, I just don't think it translates very well to 3D, and that might have been part of what this movie was uh, suffering under because like. My opinion, the cloud people looked like crap. Mm. Like they were just not appealing designs in the slightest. Because everybody had this huge bulbous head. Yeah. And tiny little bodies. And uh, the fact that you even got a. a the, the, there was art like this in the end credits. Yeah. As they were showing the different characters. And I said, okay, so this was Tumblr style originally. Yeah, uh, I, I I've noticed that with di- a lot of Disney movies that they in the end credits you see that art, that art style like uh, Big Hero yeah. Six had it. Yeah, uh, and and Luca was similar. Like Luca was a similar sort of Tumblr style as this. Yeah. And if I had to, you know, go with what did I like better, I, I think I got much more tired of Luca by the end of it than this. Mm-hmm. And Luca was like a very small movie because it took place in just one little area more or less yeah where this at least felt like they had some variety to it yeah yeah you go from you go from fire town to the to the main city and then all the, the surrounding water villa water yeah yeah um also I, I would say from a cgi perspective everything that wasn't a character was actually really good um yeah. Like the effects where Ember was melting glass, or they were making the charcoal briquettes as fire nuts, or whatever they call them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I find myself having mixed feelings about this one, but uh, as, for a final review. But uh, Daniel, you go ahead and go first because I think you have less mixed feelings than I did. Um, yeah, I, I I thought it. Um, I mean, it started off. It starts off okay, like you, you like you were saying. It's kind of hard to. It was it was hard for me to kind of get to and to get invested in the characters, but then, um, yeah, it, it's it's a again, no pun intended, a slow burn. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, it it was. I mean, it it, 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 it to quote a uh, former American Idol judge Randy Jackson, it was all right for me. You know, <laughs> it was it was. I yeah. mean, it, uh, certainly not. Uh, Certainly not the worst Pixar movie ever, but I would definitely put it kind of like lower half. I mean, if you're if you're looking at like gold standard Pixar movies like Toy Story, Bugs Life, uh, you know, the the first Incredibles, um, it's it's not in there. But um, but it's you know. yeah, it's it's not going to hurt anybody for having spent the time to watch it. Right. Yeah. I, I was reasonably entertained. I, I think it's kind of disappointed. I like it more than you did, and I dislike it more than you did. I think, <laughs> it's like the parts I liked, I actually really found myself enjoying, and the parts I didn't were just kind of tiresome. I think it's because they have the they had the character beats down. They just didn't quite have the setting or the plot. Right. Yeah. Because, like, let me give you an example of something that we talked about. Uh, they had the story of how her parents ended up in the elemental city. Right. And yeah. the story was entirely, the entire idea of the story was there was a big storm back in their town or back in their home. Yeah. And it seemed like just specifically their home got destroyed. And yeah. so rather than the other fire people chipping in as a community to help them rebuild their one and only house that was damaged in the community, oh, yeah. we got to go to the, the, to the elemental city. Yeah, it's 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 the opposite of what happened with ne- with the with the Flanders family and the Simpsons when their hur- when their house got taken out by a hurricane. At yeah. Least, it, yeah, at least the people in Springfield actually tried to rebuild their house. Yeah, <laughs> even if they didn't do it well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I I kind of get where they had to give them a reason they had to come to a place where they knew that they weren't going to be liked or that they weren't going to like the others. Yeah. But um, and it's like you couldn't exactly make up General Fire Daffy doing a uh, coup in the in fire a military coup to take over Fireland and impose his rule, and the parents had to leave because that would introduce a whole plot line that you'd expect some sort of payoff on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you wouldn't want it. And it occurs to me as even as I start thinking about it, you would absolutely never see Disney do a story where it turned out that the villains were Fireland ter- uh, extremists who were striking against the city for their mistreatment of the fire people who were secretly <laughs> agents of General Fire Daffy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie, that might have been a more interesting movie, just for... Yeah. But, but people would have, like, you know, whatever Middle Eastern-y elements I thought that the parents, the, the, the family had... Boy, that would have really uh, immediately clarified it as what people would take them as, and I don't think people would have liked that. Uh, no, no, it, it would, yeah, yeah. So, it's just, but it's, it's like I think that's like kind of emblematic of the problems of the plot. There isn't an antagonist. The only antagonist antagonist is racism, and it's relatively easily combated racism, but it's also racism that has a point. This, <laughs> yeah, like the the fire people and the water people are literally a danger to each other, just being in the same area. Right. Like, yeah. Every time a fire person gets wet, they have to quickly eat a log, or else a piece of their body is just gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It, it's it's like you know if a I don't know I'm just gonna be if a if a Japanese person and an Argentinian person. Are, are sharing a bus together. If the Argentinian person, Argent, Argentinian person, accidentally trips and falls on them, half of the Japanese person's body doesn't immediately vanish. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's, you know, it's like I'd say it's like it's a solid enough movie. If you have kids, they'll probably enjoy it because they won't be thinking about the stuff like being a killjoy, like I'm being, or like we're being. Yeah. But, <laughs> but as a writer, it's like. This just needed like one more draft. This needed somebody to question some design choices. This needed somebody to go. It, honestly, it needed a John Lasseter. Uh, uh, yeah, it did. <laughs> because I think he would have polished this into something great. Uh, I, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Of course, we we all know what happened with him. Yeah, I as well know. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, you know, uh, like I said, it's on Disney Plus. If anyone out there is interested in watching it, yep. After we spend almost the run length of the movie talking about it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? we had thoughts. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Um, speaking of things we have thoughts about, uh, this will probably be fairly short because uh, there isn't a whole lot to go into at the box office this week. Um, yeah. we, had, we had some releases, but I don't think that, at least for me, there wasn't really anything that would be in my, oh, I'm going to watch this at some point list. Uh, I, I, I'm a little interested in the creator. Um, oh, forgot about the creator. Yeah. Yeah, creator's probably the most interesting one of these, just because, Daniel, they made a movie. Well, the, the guy who made Rogue One. Uh, yeah. Or, or who didn't make, or who was trying to make Rogue One and then got yanked, I should say. Right, yeah. <laughs> made a movie that isn't based on a book or a comic book, a previous movie series, a television series from the 90s. Yeah. A video game. It's just a movie. Right. Yeah. And uh, a, a rather topical movie about AI and, you know, uh, transhumanism stuff. Uh, at least I think that that last part is in this movie. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've I, I've kind of heard like mixed things about it. Um, uh, the guys over at Film Threat had uh, mixed feelings about it. Um, I know. Uh, Alan Ning basically said, "If you've if you've watched enough sci-fi, um, you know, movies and story, or seen enough sci-fi stories, it is predictable." Um, but uh, and and Chris Gore wasn't too impressed with uh, with the lead actor. Um, it's uh, what's his name from uh, Denzel Washington's kid from he was in Tenant. Mm. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'll I'll probably give this a watch when it drops on probably drop it'll probably drop on Hulu or Disney Plus, one of the two. Right, because it is technically a Disney movie as part of their 20th Century Fox acquisition. Right. Yeah. But uh, it's not doing too well from the looks of it. No, but it was also a cheap movie. So. Yeah. Well, um, I, I saw a video on WDW Pro's channel. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, apparently they spent 125 million on the marketing. I didn't see a. I, I didn't even know this movie was coming out. I, I've seen some ads. I, I'd seen some ads for it um, when uh, on my. The only time I ever watch terrestrial TV is when I'm staying at a hotel, mm. and I was seeing ads for it on there. But uh, okay, but yeah. so never mind. Uh, this thing is a huge money pit, and this yeah, will teach, this will teach Disney the wrong lesson, right? Yeah, and and Jeff over at World Class BSers because he was on the same video with uh, with Pro, he just he just said you know that they didn't need to do that much marketing for it because word of mouth for this movie was already kind of uh, spreading, and they just they just needed to release it, you know. Uh, but, um, but yeah, well. Just goes to show you that uh, Disney can't figure that. <laughs> Who's running things over there? Seriously. Yeah, yeah, who, yeah. Whoever is in charge of their their budgets and accounting, just like, uh, yeah, they need to be fired. God, that, that's weird because, like, I, I saw a fair number of movies in theaters the last few months, and I didn't see anything about it. Like, fit, I kept so, talking about trailers I had seen that you had no idea about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ninja, yeah, Ninja says he saw the trailer before Haunting in Venice. It's a the worst okay. type of film to adver to advertise. Mm. Huh. Yeah. Well, um, big money pit or not, I'll, yeah, I'll probably give that a watch at some point, just because yeah. it'll at least be unique. Um, yeah, indeed. Speaking of things that aren't unique, though. Mm. Oh, and also launching a sci-fi movie um, the first the last weekend of September. You know, this this could have you actually could have probably put it out around Christmas time and done pretty decent with it. Oh yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, because October is the that's the time for horror, which of course there's a big horror movie coming out this weekend, uh, The Exorcist. Yeah, yeah and, and also like okay, Disney, stop releasing things out of season. I, I swear, <laughs> I swear that your stupid haunted mansion movie would have done better if you had swapped places between this and the creator. Uh, yeah, yeah. Although uh, uh, Haunted Mansion's on Disney Plus now, so yeah, which means it's costing them even more money to yeah. <laughs> for the rights and to run the servers and everything. So uh, uh, yeah, that's true. Nicely done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then yeah. of course, I, you know, you've you've heard of Barbenheimer, but are you ready for Saw Patrol? <laughs> <laughs> 
which uh, th those are the top two of the weekend. Uh, Saw X. It's a horror movie. I have no opinion. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen any of the other Saw movies, so no opinion either. Um, I, from people who like those movies, it sounds like this might be the best one since the original. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, mm. if it's you like if that's your thing, go for it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Paw Patrol, I saw a trailer for that ahead of The Flash, I think. And yeah. I, I think it's just hilarious how as the superhero movie is dying, what goes, what gets to, what gets to theater, theaters, a uh, the Paw Patrol franchise desperately trying to keep its relevance with the kid audience by becoming a superhero movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw the trailer. This is a nothing movie, but but if you're a, a Paw Patrol kid or your kid's a Paw Patrol fan, he, he or she is going to want the toys and uh, I just don't want to go see. Yeah. You know, it's going to be one of those DVDs that you burn out in the in your player because you're, you're going to end up playing it for them so many times oh yeah yeah uh one of the one of those kids was my niece she uh, she loved paw patrol so yeah, yeah. so it, and and also this thing cost 30 million to make probably because they were just using existing assets and staff from their tv show yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe with you know maybe with the rtx turned on but yeah 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 slight slight uh um slight upgrade with the animation yeah but uh so that might be the movie of the, that might be like the financial winner of this bunch of movies oh yeah yeah F uh, 50 million on a 30 million budget yeah it'll probably it'll, it'll should make yeah. its money back so you know paramount good good on you yeah uh and then saw um similar you know well actually way bigger nationally than internationally but these things can't be expensive to make no um well, cowards don't have a budget <laughs> yeah i think i think the original saw was only made for, for like a couple of million dollars if that i mean that, that's why they make horror yeah. movies is because they're really good roi oh oh yeah yeah um you know especially a movie where it's just three guys in a room yeah and it, it occurs to me that another example of disney doing things the dumb way they made an expensive horror movie with the haunted mansion. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Um. So as far as other things, uh, Barbenheimer continues its weird, almost perfectly fifty percent relationship with each other. One point four million for Barbie, six hundred thousand for Oppenheimer, as they both are bowing out of theaters. Oh, wow. It's just. Uh, it's funny just how close to lockstep they are. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's spooky. <laughs> it's almost every weekend. It's like that. Um, Makes you wonder. Mm. Is it a conspiracy? <laughs> yes. Are there that many South Koreans going to the theater over and over again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 anyway. Oh, geez. <laughs> um. Then uh, Expendables uh, had a bad opening weekend, and it's barely crossed 10 million as of its second weekend uh so this thing is a complete loss man uh that Although, is just yeah when did ninja turtles cross 100 million i don't think i remember it doing that i don't remember doing that either that must have been must have been a weekday thing yeah because it has legs yeah I guess it. I guess it does make sense for a turtles movie to. Uh, of course, its its current legs is four dot two zero because you know, Seth Rogen. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, still, still a loss in the theaters, but they'll probably make it back uh, on the toys. So it's done yeah. its job. Yeah. E e even if the movie sucks. <laughs> yeah. See. Okay. So, like, if I compare. It, Nerd Turtles to uh, Elemental. Um, I would say they both had the the tools they needed to make a great movie. Mm -hmm. I would say that Elemental uh, whiffed it, but I, I would say they, you know, instead of instead of like wasting all their concepts, it's more like you just needed that little bit of extra polish. Yeah. yeah. But at least it was a baseline hit instead of uh, completely striking out for me. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and Ninja says. Uh... Disney investors should just fire every executive and replace them. Well, 
Yeah. Yeah. But now, to be fair, there there wasn't a Disney there wasn't a Disney involved in the either example there, except for the creator. Yeah. Uh, like I, I think that there's um, a lot of um, I think there's a lot of cleaning house that needs to be done. I, at least as far as the executives I'm aware of, I would say that Warner Brothers probably has the smartest guy who's currently dealing with some bad situations that he inherited. Yeah. Um, uh, and although um, uh, James Gunn doesn't seem to be helping him out too much. No. Come on. <laughs> gee, gee, Daniel, you mean to tell me that the guy who used to, sp to sit on Twitter all day making pedophile jokes <laughs> that got him canceled by by the right looking to get their own scalp a few years back has a, a history of going on Twitter and saying things that can blow up on him. Who would have thought? Yeah. 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 Who would have thunk it? Uh, yeah. Jeez. But, um, so yeah, that's, that's the box office kind of a down weekend, but you know, it's kind of neat that they put out three things. Yeah. Yeah. Give, give us, give us a little more to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, Daniel, uh, they don't make movies like they used to. No, they don't. And yeah. I accidentally closed my window, so give me a moment here. All right. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking we. I, I need to get that, uh, uh, try to find that clip, get that clip of Bill O'Reilly yelling, you know, we're doing it, we're going to do it live. F it, we'll do it live. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I'm almost glad I found I lost my cover because this one is actually more interesting. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, so, for so we had our no hype of a newish movie. Um, then we have our weekly uh, classic movie review. When I mentioned yeah. to my grandparents that I had watched this, I said, "Oh, that was a big movie, wasn't it?" <laughs> yeah. Um... So yeah, we went back to the western genre with you know, gun gunfight at the OK Corral. Gunfight at the OK Corral, based on a true story. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so uh, this is of course uh, the uh, the the story of uh, of Wyatt Earp and his brothers and Doc Holliday. Uh, although that's that, that's not near that's in the third act, but uh, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, so so it isn't so much just about the gunfight, the OK Corral. It's like all the build up up to it. Yeah, it's it's uh, if if you've seen Tombstone with Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer, it's the opposite of that. So like like Tombstone, the the shootout at the OK Corral is at the end of the first act. This movie, it's the climax. Um, so uh, uh, the the movie, of course, it starts off uh, where we meet uh, uh, Doc Holliday, uh, who's uh, who's played by uh, Kirk, uh, Kirk Douglas, uh, the the father of Michael Douglas, uh, and Boy, he yeah. they just established him as a despicable character from the start. Oh yeah, well uh, well well, Doc Holliday, you know he. he he kind of was a, a bit of a reprobate. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to be honest here. Uh, okay, Corral. Part of the reason I was interested in this movie was I realized I knew nothing whatsoever about this. Like mm. I knew the names Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. I had actually assumed that Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday fought each other at the OK Corral, having wow. never heard anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the names and the place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, so, I knew about it, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I knew about it because I, 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 I had seen the, the aforementioned Tombstone a couple of times, uh, which if you have not seen that movie, I highly recommend it. Okay. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, probably the, the uh, no, actually, I would say the best acting performance from Val Kilmer, playing Doc Holliday. Um, to be fair, with Val Kilmer... Um... Is there a lot that's actually in the running? Uh, uh, probably not. I mean, um, I, mean, I guess. Well, maybe uh, maybe the Doors. Although I've I've never seen the Doors. Um, and and played, I always the Top Gun. To, yeah, Top Gun. Yeah. Um, definitely not Batman Forever. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, but but anyway, uh, get back to the uh, to this movie. Um, uh, 
so we, we have Doc Holliday, and he's in uh, he's in Griffin, Texas, which I actually had to go see where Griffin, Texas is. It's right, it's north, or, or I should say, it's southeast of Dallas, Fort Worth. Okay, um, it, it's actually very close to Louisiana border. Um, okay, uh, but uh, it's but anyway, so he's there, and the, uh, there's a there's a guy there who who wants to. Uh, Wants to wants to kill him because of because of he, Doc Holliday killed his brother, and he's just kind of hanging out in his in his uh, hotel room throwing knives at the door. <laughs> and it's a nice little detail. The door is just covered in gouges from. Like, you, he's been pl- clearly playing this game for a while. Yeah, and uh, I, I I hate to be the the owner of that inn when he s- sees that door. Like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to replace the whole thing and the frame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and you wonder if, um, like, how they went about doing that. Like, is that just the evidence of how many takes they had done before they got it right? Because he was actually throwing the knife over. This was this was no special effects, as far as I could tell. No, no, yeah, he. he it, it, there probably was. They probably probably was practice. <laughs> yeah. So like, well, you know, you, you, we have to show that you've been doing that for a while. So just, you know. and you got to be able to throw the knife and have it actually hit blade first instead of uh, handle first right. throughout the scene while pretending to drink and berating your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Doc has some. He's got. He he's got some serious lady troubles in this movie. Got some demons. Yeah. Um, and uh, of course, and then right at that same time, Wyatt Earp shows up in town. Wyatt Earp is played by Burt Lancaster, and he's looking for uh, Johnny Ringo, who's a, but uh, I would say gun for hire. And uh, the sheriff isn't playing ball with him, uh, much to Wyatt's chagrin. And so he goes over to the tavern and uh, talks to the the tavern owner, who offers him a longhorn steak, which uh, is. If you if you know anything about long uh, I don't know if you know anything about longhorn meat uh, it's very lean, uh, but uh, uh, little things you learn when you live in Texas for majority of your adult life. Um, uh, but um, so then he he learns that Doc Holiday is there. Yeah, go ahead and keep going. Uh, the the cat I'm house sitting is about to destroy the door, so I'll be oh, right. okay. <laughs> Speaking of ruined doors, uh, yes, <laughs> but um, but yeah, so he uh, he shows up and then he he hears that Doc Holiday is there and he goes to see Doc Holiday at the hotel. And uh, they had actually met before, they'd mentioned in the movie they met before. For those of you who don't know, Doc Holiday, the reason he's called Doc Holiday was because he was a dentist. Um, and uh, and I'm back. All right, welcome back. Yeah, uh, you hear a cat chirping in the background, but oh uh, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I was, I was just saying that uh, Wyatt goes to to talk to Doc Holiday at the hotel, and uh, he uh, Wyatt fills him in on a little the thing to help him out uh, to, that would help Doc out, and then uh, so but he's expecting something from Doc in return, and uh, Doc doesn't give it to him, and he's like, "Well, we had a deal. Oh, you didn't make." Uh, you, I, I didn't make a deal with you. <laughs> yeah, you, you said um, while we were, while I was watching it, I was you know, sending you my thoughts that uh, Doc Holliday is Iron Man and uh, Wyatt Earp is Captain America, and that's very true. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, the the yeah the yeah the Wyatt Earp, Wyatt's the very straight straight lace straight narrow guy, and Doc Holliday is the I just do whatever I want and kind of kind of guy. Um, the other detail about Doc Holiday that kind of explains some of his hopelessness is that he does have this persistent cough through the whole movie. Yeah, uh, uh, he had tuberculosis. Okay. Yeah. Which uh, they had no way of doing anything about back then. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, so uh, Doc ends up going to the bar, and then uh, he doesn't. Uh, doesn't shoot the guy because uh, I think the bar owner makes him give up his gun, uh, and then but then he just yep, throws the knife in the it would the the obvious pad that you can see through the guy's shirt. I missed that, but uh... yeah. 
Uh, so Wyatt and Holiday are portrayed more heroically in this film. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. Wyatt is, and Holiday has his moments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so uh, what ends up happening is uh, the the people in the town want to um, uh, just want to take matters in their own hands with Doc and just you know off him. And Wyatt uh, helps helps him escape, uh, and from there, Doc basically owes you know Wyatt his life, um, owes him a life debt, and uh, then we uh, we flash to um, where was it? They go to um, they go to Dodge City, Texas. Oh, I hear the kitty. Yep, there's the kitty. She's a loud kitty, so just have to bear with it. That's right. I I I, uh, I I mentioned this to you last week. I had a th- that cat's meow sounds a lot like the meow my cat had. That, meow, meow. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but but enough about cats. Um, the uh, um, yeah. So the so the middle of the movie is them uh, is basically uh, Doc Holiday cleans himself up a bit and kind of became becomes Erps not quite a deputy because he isn't technically a lawman at any point. I still don't think he's, was he officially a lawman at any point? He does deputize him at one point because okay. he needs him to go. Uh, they, they had to go get somebody. I can't remember who it was. Um, and uh, so they, uh, they go out and ride then they sleep outside and, you know, they get ambushed, but they, but they stop the ambush. Yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, I think it's like a good example of just a very sort of masculine friendship where they don't necessarily, like, they wouldn't necessarily share their feelings with each other, but they develop this uh, deep loyalty for one another. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it, an un- unspoken bond. Yeah. Um, and of course the other part of it too, uh, or I, I can't remember if it was the before or after that. I think it was before this uh, when uh, uh, I, I, a young lady arrives in town, a uh, beautiful redhead. Oh, who's yeah. A, yeah, who's a, a card player like Doc Holliday. And uh, of course, Wyatt's got a rule, you know, no, you know, women women can't gamble. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're doing a masculine thing right now, I think was something like the line. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was. That's yeah, right. You're, you're not. A, that's right. You, you you can't speak that way to a lady. You're playing cards. You're no lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie is very old fashioned. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, so he ends up arresting her, and then uh, it, but then Doc persuades persuades Wyatt to let her go, and he does. And uh, they they have a little Wyatt and the I can't remember her name. Laura. 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 That sounds right. You can call her Red if you just aren't sure. Right, right, yeah. Uh, they uh, they end up, they end up having a little like May to summer romance. Uh, yeah, and uh, also it occurs to me you can tell how distinctive redheaded people are. Like no one ever would call somebody with raven hair black, or no one would ever call someone with a brunette hair brown. Right. But, yeah. Like, just redhead and blondie. Like you know, hey, yo red, yo blondie. Like those are like right. the only. You can tell that those are rare hair colors because of uh, <laughs> the fact that they can become somebody's whole nickname. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, so they, um, they, they also run into another foul of some of uh, real, a real shady guy and comes into town and tries to, uh, uh, you, ca- it causes nope, a lot you of chose trouble. to come in in the middle of the podcast. So you're, you're in. Yeah, <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what did um, you think of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, so uh, uh, what was his name? Shanghai Bob, I think was his name. Yeah, Sh- Shanghai something. Which I thought yeah. was a unique nickname. Right, and and the guy is cl- and, and the guy with the nickname is clearly not from Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that it's because of the old term uh, Shanghai. So uh, right. maybe he was like a kidnapper or something. Right. Yeah. Or maybe he was uh, one of those guys like he took one trip to Shanghai as like a when he was like 
in the Navy or something, and he just never shut up about it for the rest of his life. Like, like some people go to Europe, and that becomes their entire personality. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, but yeah. So uh, he shows up and is causing trouble, and uh, Wyatt and Doc have to have to get rid of him. Uh, and I think uh, Johnny Ringo, who was uh, Wyatt, was uh, going after, uh, was with the guy, and um, and Johnny Ringo is also with uh, with uh, uh, Doc Holliday's on again, off again girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, you know, he's cleaned himself up, and she's like, "You think you're better than me now?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, who played her, by the way? I don't know. She kind of looked familiar, but I can't. IMDb. Can. Yes, IMDb. Let me uh, let's see. Uh, gunfight. Gunfight at the okay. okay correct. See, in case you're wondering, what the hell are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, Rhonda Fleming, I think. Rhonda, Fle Rhonda Fleming. Oh, no, that no, no. Rhonda Fleming the was uh, the redhead. Okay. Um, but, well, then, uh, man, the poor blonde girl does not get top billing on IMDb. Uh, 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 Joe Van Fleet. Yeah, she was putting on a. I felt like she was putting on a very um, not not quite forced is the term I would put for it, but like uh, very much an, a fake accent. Yeah. Like she was talking very like lower class Southern, but she kind of had promised that she had that good actress diction, so it kind of sounded strange at times. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so, oh, she was in East of Eden, uh, Mod Squad, yeah. the gang that couldn't shoot straight, which uh, IMDb gives a rousing four point nine out of ten. Oh. Oh, she was in Cool Hand Luke. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, not not a big name actress. It would seem no, but uh, I will say that you you believed the the scenes with her and Doc Holliday that like, they had like some sort of toxic chemistry with each other, where they clearly <laughs> were something to, to each other. But they both took an attempt at stabbing the other one at least once in the movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, uh, um, yeah, like. Yeah, it, yeah. If they were if they were alive today, and the, you saw them, they're like, oh man, that is one toxic codependent relationship there. Yeah. Oh. So, so somebody needs some therapy, and maybe we need to get uh, the government involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah. So then, um, why it is? Uh, oh yeah. I was gonna say, oh, I was gonna say like, I would class I would categorize the movie up to this point as like the setup for the gunfight. Right. Yeah. And uh, and. At first, Wyatt is getting ready to uh, quit his job as a lawman, and then he and, and the redhead, Grant Red, are going to move off to California and start a new life together. But then Wyatt gets a, a telegram from, uh, from his brother in, uh, in Tombstone saying he needs his help. And so he goes off to Tombstone, and then Doc joins him. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically, it's the, the Clanton family are, are given Wyatt's uh, three brothers a uh, really hard time. Uh, and one of one of the brothers, uh, Virgil, was played by uh, DeForest Kelly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Which, which is like, wait a second. You even mentioned he was in the movie, but I wasn't sure what he was going to be. But like, wait a minute, I know that voice. He just sounds ten years younger than I'm used to him at the, at the youngest. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was around our age when he was in that movie. So okay. Kinda of hard to believe, but yeah. You know, but people lived harder lives back then and were much more aged looking. That's true, yeah. And I and I believe he was a pretty heavy smoker too, so um but uh but yeah, yeah. they uh what kind yeah. of doctor is he? Not a miracle worker, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, he wasn't a miracle or or a bricklayer, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but um, but uh, but yeah. So uh, they uh, they end up there. And they end up in they're in Tombstone, and then yeah, like like DB was saying, things have built up to this point. Uh, built built up to there, and then um, then one night, uh, one of Wyatt's brothers, actually I think his youngest brother, uh, Morgan, I believe that's I think it was yeah, Morgan. Who I believe Wyatt had tried to talk out of his life of crime. Right. Oh no, no, that was um, one of the Clantons. Um, oh, okay. 
Yeah, it, one, it was the Clanton kid. Uh, it was played by De- uh, Dennis Hopper. A okay. very young, a very young Dennis Hopper. Oh, wow, I never even, I, I did not recognize it because I never even thought of Dennis Hopper ever being young. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was yeah, that was kind of startling to see him like that. But uh, but yeah, it was um, uh, his. Uh, I want to say it was the youngest uh, brother who was uh, had a had a gal in he had a gal in California that he was always thinking about and. And then uh, uh, one night, uh, the the Clintons ambush. Uh, actually, I think they're probably meant to kill Wyatt, but then they ended up killing uh, killing Morgan. And um, Wyatt makes more sense to try to kill since he's the lawman who's going to cause trouble. Right. Um, but uh, but they uh, but they kill his brother, and so now uh, now it's personal. And that's when they set up the uh, the whole uh, meet them at the at the OK Corral. Yep. Now I, I looked this up. Historically, it took about th- the actual gunfight at the OK Corral took about thirty seconds. Yeah. Uh, my grandparents actually had been out there before when I mentioned I had seen this movie, and they had seen the recreation of it. They said, "Yeah, about thirty seconds." <laughs> yeah, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't last very long. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing, and I said, you know, that's realistic. You know, if you have a bunch of guys at point blank range with six shooters, unless everybody's aim is awful, it's going to get resolved one way or the other pretty quick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the character beats were kind of interesting because, you know, it was Doc had had a relapse of his tuberculosis, so it was just in, in sorry shape. Yeah. But he has to, you know, get, you know, even as his codependent girlfriend is begging him to stay. No, I, you know, you and I, we don't matter for nothing, but he does. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he says, yeah, he says, Wyatt is the, the closest friend he, the closest friend he, or uh, the closest thing to a friend he's ever had. Yeah. And, and then uh, Wyatt, on the other hand, is dealing with, uh, you yeah, know, he's like, you know, he's a lawman, but he's out for revenge that day. Right. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, uh, great conflict within him yeah like this, this movie is very much a melodrama like, it's mm-hmm. a very well acted melodrama oh yeah 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 well yeah yeah uh yeah, yeah. Lancaster, Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas yeah they were you yeah. know the top actors of that of that time yeah uh, uh Ninja says he thinks uh, Virgil's murder happened after the gunfight historically the story of Wyatt Earp has a lot more gray in it yeah, I've I've it surprised me. Yeah, that surprised me. Yeah, I I know a little bit about it, but not a lot. Yeah, yeah. Now, now from a historical perspe- historical perspective, yeah, like he's he's being portrayed as a Boy Scout here. Yeah, who, who has like a one lapse of judge or one really big lapse of judgment. Um, yeah. But from like a dramatic perspective, it makes a much sharper contrast with him and Doc Holliday as these unlikely friends and allies. So yeah. I'll allow it. <laughs> yes, I, I, I will too. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I I think this was um, you know, I, I I after watching this movie and then the shootist a couple of weeks ago, I can I can see why westerns were so popular for as long as they were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's because uh, it's it's a nice kind of low tech setting. Like nobody's getting the better on the other guy because they have the better kit. Right. It is about reflexes, skill, and gumption. Yeah. And you have varying characters with varying backgrounds and different, you know, moralities and, and, uh, different codes. And it makes it, it makes for much more interesting storytelling. Right. And that's, that is the nice thing about Westerns is that as long as they could, as long as a character could realistically have been in the wild West in the 19th century, you can give them any background you like. Yeah. And if you're doing a neo western, you know, you pick the right time and place. You could have a Chinese person or a Japanese person who came to work on the railroads, or yeah. you could have you know someone from Ireland who came because of the potato famine. You could have, uh, or just you know the big waves of Irish immigration that were happening in general. Right. Yeah. You could have uh, you could have someone from the northeast. You could you could have you can have Civil War veterans from either, either side dealing with the outcomes of that war. Yeah. Very rich history. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I remember um, he, uh, speaking of the Civil War. Yeah, I remember Wyatt mentioning uh, two his two brothers fought in the Civil War. Yeah, and uh, that's another thing. Uh, now, did Wyatt, was Wyatt on the north or the south side? 
Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it depends on if they were from Texas or not. Like, if he was actually from Texas, then almost surely uh, Confederate. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned that because uh, they mentioned that Doc Holliday's family was from Georgia, so you know what side they were on, right. and that, how they lost everything after the war, and they put everything together to put him through dental school, and boy, did that pay off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why he was Doc Holliday. Yeah. But, uh, and I really liked, so, non-spoiler thing, you know, good movie, it's on Paramount Plus, it's free, go watch it, it's, it's a good time. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Spoiler moment. After uh, Doc gets his revenge, I really liked the moment where he just drops his uh, sheriff's star. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, he's a good man who did a bad thing, and his morals are such that you know, he knows that he's lost the right to wear it. Right. Yeah. It. Um, yeah, it was sort of like, um, well, it, it was like the ending of... Um... Uh, oh, uh, Ninja says uh, uh, Republican papers generally supported Wyatt Earp. Democrat papers hated. Okay, so he was he's more of a union, at least a union flavored kind of guy. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that yeah that that reminded me of um, it, was, it was similar to in Dirty Harry when uh, when he throws his at the end of the movie when he throws his badge away. And, and for that matter, to bring up the Captain America and uh, Iron Man thing, it did it did kind of make me think of Civil War. <laughs> Yeah, right. The morally up upright one um, made a questionable choice because of his personal loyalties. Right, and then and yeah, and then he he gives Stark back his Stark is the shield back because he said, you know, my my father made that shield. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. It's it, it is kind of interesting how uh, in those Marvel movies, uh, it started off with Tony as the as the selfish guy who became less selfish over time. And arguably, Captain America became the most selfish of them all by the end of it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, well, well, yeah. The the, 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 I mean, he did go back in time, and you know, so that he could to bone Peggy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> although, although, you know, uh, who could blame him? <laughs> yes. Who among us wouldn't screw over the space time continuum? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> anyway, uh, that. But uh, enough of that diversion. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I would just. Uh, I mean, that, that's my overall take on it. Is that it's a well acted movie. The one thing that's kind of funny is the soundtrack. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Because uh, this was in the the era of movies where every single movie, like people associate it with James Bond to have a theme song with the title of the movie over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this was all of them. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, go around. Boot hill, boot hill. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I don't know who sang it, but it's it sounded like uh, one of the classic Western guys. Like it's a very classic style song. Oh yeah. And I, what do you want to bet they sold like a million singles of that thing? <laughs> that oh was, yeah, probably. Yeah, that was like a catchy song. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and it just says he would he'd save Joan of Arc. Yeah, and, yeah. With Joan of Arc, and this might be a story idea somebody could pursue. Um, it's not like like if you just snatch her out of the fire before anybody notices, then uh, yeah, you can have a minimal impact on history. That's true. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I I, I I I agree. Give this movie a watch. Um, yeah, you'll. Um, uh, I, I think uh, younger me probably wouldn't have liked it because it was too talky, but um, yeah. older me appreciates it. Appreciates yeah, it. Uh, it's yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I definitely felt like it was of an of an age. Like uh, I can't. I, I at the opening where they had the big presented in Vista Vision. I said <laughs> there were other Vista Vision movies than uh, White Christmas. Cause that's the only movie I've ever seen that has that opening. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> but uh, don't expect anything even remotely approaching modern sensibilities. Oh no, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, 
but it's just a, a couple of powerhouse actors uh, and the fight scenes were exciting. I actually had the volume on my TV too high, but I had a cat on my lap and I didn't have access to the volume. So oh. <laughs> good, good uh, gun sound effect works. Actually, there were like, you know, some movies you watch, it's like the pew, pew sound for the yeah. gun. Now these were booming explosions when they were firing their guns. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they 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 put uh, they they give it all in the in this movie, yeah, you know, with the effects, yeah, yeah, at least the yeah the foley work, right, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it was a nice spontaneous choice when we were going through our different streaming services. So yes, yeah. do not regret it. I I don't either. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think we have uh, we've uh, exhausted these these topics as much as we can yes uh, so uh overall conclusion uh, elemental is okay this movie's better but yes. your kids will probably like elemental better yeah indeed um <laughs> all right well um uh, uh thank you everybody for tuning in uh we appreciate it as That's always great. yeah uh give uh give this stream a like uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, ring the bell for notifications. Uh, buy some books. <laughs> from, buy from my TV. book. Buy yeah. my book. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, we will see you all next week. Yep. Everybody. Later, everyone.